Hi everybody. Welcome to the video. This is a peas. I am staying at Casa de Happy for now right now. Um, I'm right at the tail end of my trip visiting with Izzy and Grumps and Peas. So we're gonna haul everything I bought. It was no, a you're lot. Not. Cause she, she said no. <laughs> as long as Peas will let me, we're gonna film, I'm gonna haul everything that we got. She's kind of camped out on my suitcase like she doesn't want me to leave or something. Maybe she likes me a little bit. <laughs> Come on, ma'am. Go get mom. Go get mom. Okay, so this is a cumulative haul from everything that we've done. This has basically been a book shopping trip for both of us while I've been out here. We've had a fantastic time and it's been a lot of fun. I found a lot of amazing things that I'm super excited about. So let's dive in. Let's talk about them. I'm going to talk about all of the manga first and then we'll talk about the book second. I'll probably break that up. I got a couple of non-bookish items um, and non-manga items. I just got some merch kind of things and I'll throw those in the middle to kind of break up the two. But everything will be timestamped down below. So if you're more interested in one thing than another, then we can do that. But the places we hit up were Barnes & Noble, obviously, because of my discount, Books A Million, and Half Price Books, which I've never been to before because of where I live, and also McKay's, which is native to this area and there's some out in the carolinas as well so with that said i made off like a bandit at mckay's <laughs> and i bought a lot and when i say i bought a lot we're having to ship a box home and i basically had brought an extra suitcase yeah i did that <laughs> Now, not all of this is added to my TBR. Some of these are replacing volumes that I had loaned out to people and haven't gotten back, things like that. So let's just dive in with my biggest find. So I found an entire shoujo series. I found all of a series called Wild Ones. It seems to be Yakuza based. And y'all know me and Yakuza manga lately. So this was a huge find to find the entire series. So I'm gonna show you the covers, obviously. I've got Volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, volume six, volume seven. She's all cute and Christmassy on the back. Volume eight, volume nine, and volume 10, which is the final volume, as you can see there on the back. So I'm gonna read you the description off of volume one, since it's an older series. Sachi Wakamura lo just lost her mother and her estranged grandfather has shown up to take care of her. The only problem is that grandpa is the head of a Yakuza gang. Sachi tries to continue living her normal life, but she can't run far since Rakuto? 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 One of the most popular guys in school is part of her grandfather's gang and her new protector. Soon, Sachi finds herself falling for her bodyguard, but she's the grandfather of Rakuto's boss, so he can never show his feelings for her. Can Sachi find a, find a way to fit into her new family and seize her chance at romance? Like, y'all know this sounds like me. This sounds like something I'm going to love. So I'm very hopeful for this series. I've not heard too many people talk about this particular one, I think because it's older. So I am very excited to read and share my thoughts. If you want a designated reading vlog for Wild Ones, let me know and I will do that. Another one I found at McKay's was A Devil and Her Love, so Love Song Volume 4. I'm pretty sure I do not have Volume 4 yet. I know I have 1 through 3 and Volume 7. I don't think I have 4. If I have 4, this is a duplicate. It's in great condition. I will probably sell it or donate it to a local used bookstore, if not, because it was like $1.50. So if it's a duplicate, then it's a duplicate, but I think it's not, so I'm very excited. I found some manhwa that was beautiful, and it was the first four volumes, so I'm really excited. I'm not sure if it keeps going after these four. I'm gonna have to do some research, but I really wanted to try it at the very least, and that is Bride of the Water Guard. So I have volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four. I am very interested in Asian mythology and stories related to the water god and a bride. So this one just tickled, it like ticked all my boxes. So I'm very, very excited about that one. And then the last 
manga slash graphic novels that I found at McKay's. I'm going to talk about the graphic novels here. I did find Space Boy Volume 14. I'm slowly collecting these, so if you ever find them cheap, let me know. Um, I also picked up Afar by Leela Daduka and Kit Seaton, I want to say, or Seton. I'm not sure how you say their last name. But um, the big blurb on the back says, The nameless city meets Star Wars in this epic young adult fantasy adventure with the spirit and spunk of Delilah Dirk and the Turkish lieutenant. So it just sounds like a fun hodgepodge of stories. So I'm really interested in seeing where this one goes. Um, the next one I got, I have here, I am so sad I found it so cheap. This was again $1.50 and that is March Book One. Um, March is a very important graphic novel series, so I'm really excited to have found a copy in such magnificent condition for $1.50. So I, I'm just so excited because this is one I've been wanting to read for a long time, so I'm very excited to get started on it. So that was everything from McKay's. Let's quickly talk about the one manga item that I picked up from Half Price Books. The Half Price Books we went to didn't have a large manga section. It was actually quite small. Um, and from a lot of my friends who shop Half Price Books, I was surprised at how small this particular one was. But they did have some Japanese volumes and those intrigued me as like souvenirs for trips. So for this trip, I ended up picking up Daytime Shooting Star. I believe it's volume six. This is one of my favorite covers from the entire series because he is, he is my favorite. And so I wanted to have the Japanese version of this particular volume because I think it'll make a great souvenir. And it's fun because they do like promos of what's going on on these little wraps. I really wish American publishers would take some notes from Japanese ones and do them like this because they're beautiful. And then everything else is a mix of Books A Million and Barnes. Um, I can't remember which came from where right now. So we're just gonna go through what I got. Alrighty, here's this first stack. So first up, I was able to find Monster and the Beast Volume 2. I've not been able to find Volume 2 like anywhere where I live. It's been so hard to find, not been available to order, so I was really excited to find Monster and the Beast 2 so that I can keep going with this series because I love it. The other thing I found was In the Clear Moonlit Dusk Volume 2. I love this series so very much. Um, I'm obsessed with the first volume, so I'm really excited to keep going. Um, a newer series that I picked up was Barbarites. Um, the tagline on the back just says, I'll protect you with my entire being. Like, if that's not a line that screams, yes, Shay, read me, I don't know that another one exists. Um, the next one I have is a series that I've wanted to try for a very long time, and that is Children of the Sea, Volume 1. In this one, um, it's all about a girl who can hear different things from the sea and the two boys that can also seem to hear these things and what that means for the adults. From what I remember, the series isn't incredibly long, but since they had volume one, I definitely wanted to pick it up and try it at least because this is one that's very intriguing to me. I did finally cave and pick up Pulse volume one. Um, I know volume two is out, but I'm only getting volume one for now. I started this on Lesin and read until I'd have to pay. And I like the story well enough that I am interested enough to purchase and see how things go from there. So again, I'm very excited and I just didn't want to have to double pay and like pay on Lesin and then buy the physical. That's where I'm at at this moment. So there's that. Um, the next one I have here is Asumi Chan is interested in Lesbian Brothels Volume 1. So I'm morbidly curious about this one. <laughs> so I'm going to read it. I'm going to try it. If y'all want a designated review, let me know and I will tell you all my feelings about it at the very least in a vlog, if not in a dedicated review. It'll depend on how I'm feeling by the end, but it's looking very cute by the back. So I am curious. Um, the next one I have here is Phantom Tales of the Night, Volume 10. This is a series that I've really loved and enjoyed. I continue to pick them up as they come out for the most part. And this is just the most recent one that I hadn't picked up yet. So it was a really nice find for me. The next one that I picked up was I Want to Be a Wall, Volume 2. Y'all know how obsessed I am with Volume 1. I'm really excited to keep going with this one. And I can't wait to see where these two end up in the end of this volume. 
The next one I have here is Doomsday with my dog. I read a ton of cat manga, but there's not a lot of dog manga out there. So this one seems super cute and I'm really excited to try it. I made a huge investment and repurchased a volume that I've I had loaned out to someone and they never returned, and that is my three-in-one of Full Metal Alchemist. Because this happened, I did consider just repurchasing the entire series, but that did not feel financially responsible for me, as gorgeous as they are. So I just picked up a fresh three-in-one so that I have my entire collection. I may reread it and kind of annotate it this year. I haven't fully decided yet. I'm focused on so many other series that are going to take up a lot of my time. I don't know if I can do that. But if you're interested in my thoughts on this series, you can let me know and I might push up that reread. The other thing I made a big investment in is buying five volumes of a series I haven't read yet. <laughs> I know y'all, I know. But um, this is a series that my friends love and adore and that is Kaiju number eight. Yes, I finally caved. I'm jumping on the Kaiju number eight train. So I have volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four, and volume five. I am definitely excited. I love kaiju lore, so I don't think this one will do anything to like super make me angry. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Okay, so next up I have the next installment in Mao, so that's volume nine. I now have two volumes to read. I continue to really love and adore this Rumiko Takahashi series. I feel like she's taken everything that she's learned from all of the series that she's written and combined them into one beautiful, amazing story. And this doesn't feel like it drags or is too repetitive like some of her other series. So this has been brilliant so far. The next one I have here is The Summer You Were There, Volume 2. I really enjoyed Volume 1, though I am afraid of where it might go. So I decided to go ahead and pick up Volume 2 and then I'll make a final decision on that. Something that I picked up early on the trip and I've already read is Honey Lemon Soda Volume 1. Honey Lemon Soda is amazing. Do not judge this cover, like the series by this cover, because the insides are just absolutely stunning. The art is so much better inside than it is outside <laughs> to me. So if you judge this by its cover, you're going to miss out on some really amazing shoujo art. This is like Komi for shoujo lovers and the romance moves at a better pace. So if the pace of Komi is what was bugging you, this one might be a better fit and I just adore it. The next one I have here is Prince Freya volume eight. This was a fantastic volume. I have already read it while I've been here. And in this one, we get some more Alec backstory, which is fantastic. And the way the story is progressing is wildly interesting to me. So yes, very, very excited about this one. The next one I have here is Cheeky Brat Volume 5. This was out on the shelves early. So I went ahead and snagged it since I won't be buying much manga after this trip, obviously, because I have so much to read. But I couldn't help myself. I love Cheeky Brat and having Volume 5 out, like I just had to pick it up. Next is Fly Me to the Moon Volume 15, another series I continue to love and adore. I am a couple of volumes behind at this point, but I'm hoping once I get home, I get, I'll be able to focus and get them read pretty quickly. Then I have The Country Without Humans Volume 3. I'll finally be able to read Volume 2 because I will have an emergency volume for bad days again. So I'm very excited to continue this story about a little girl on an island of robots being the only human. A new series that has been intriguing me for a very long while is The Night Blooms Behind Castle Walls. This is about a girl who wants to be a knight, so she knows she has to start out as a squire, and so this is her adventures in becoming a knight. Feels very slice of lifey almost, so very excited to try this one out. The, this stack, y'all. That's not even all of them, because a bunch of them are in the suitcase again. <laughs> Um, next I have Free Run Volume 7. Y'all know I love Free Run and this series is just so special to me. It's a great slice of life story if you like what happens after the adventure to the people involved and she's kind of started on a new adventure now. It's much more chill than the original one as far as I can tell from her perspective. But yes, I really love a good slice of life y'all. You know this though. Another thing I found out early was Tsubaki Cho Lonely Planet Volume 2. I loved Volume 1 so very much. I love Mika Yamamori. I mean, I already have, I have all of Daytime Shooting Star. I'm collecting in the Clear Moonlit's Dusk and Tsubaki Cho. Like, I just, I really enjoy 
their work. Um, this one is an age gap. I'm pretty sure the age gap wins in the end of this one, unlike Daytime Shooting Star. So yes, still very excited to see where this one goes. The next volume I have here is one that I have read, and that is volume two of My Happy Marriage. I really enjoy My Happy Marriage. Um, as you know, I'm double dipping. I'm reading the light novel and reading the manga. I did read this one while I was here. It was such a good installment. I really enjoyed it. Um, this one, we are still in volume one of the light novel by the end, so it'll take up about half of volume three, I think, to finish out um, what's gone on in volume one of the light novel. It might take all of volume three. I'm not 100% sure. So if you're curious on pacing of the light novel compared to the manga, that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, this one is also a first time purchase, but it is one I have read digitally a lot. I've already read it several times, and that is Liquor and Cig Cigarettes by Ranmaru Zarya. Um, I love this series. This is a one shot in which we're following these two childhood friends becoming more than childhood friends. It's amazing. I love it. I adore it. We have a chaotic buy and someone figuring out who they are, and it's it's done so well. I really love it. Um, I believe we talked about this on Thirsty Thursday a couple years back. If I can find that, I will link it in the corner. And then the last volume of manga I have here is In the Land of Leattle, Volume 2. I really loved Volume 1. Very excited to read Volume 2. If you liked SAO in the beginning but wanted more, this gives that feel. If you're familiar with the arcs of sword art, um, it's like the Mother's Rosario arc to me. It has that kind of feel and vibe. And give it a little more slice of life in there, and that's pretty much what this is. So I'm really enjoying it so far. So that is it for the manga portion. Let's get to the book portion. I don't really have any of the merch in here, do I? I did not bring the merch in here. Oh. oh. Whoops. <laughs> All right. So I did get Steve um a souvenir from this trip <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's an inuyasha mug that says sit boy <laughs> he and i love to watch it together so i think he'll just find it funny i don't think he's gonna take offense to it because it's none meant but like it's just this funny thing for the two of us so the second i saw it i was like oh my gosh i need to get that for steve izzy pointed it out and i'm just like um yes it must go home with me it must belong to the hubs and yes we are very very excited to give it to him aren't we peas no you cannot have my bag speaking of bags <laughs> This is my Kilala backpack that I got while I was at Books A Million. It's adorable. If it wasn't so cute, I wouldn't have bought it. It's like really soft and furry right here on the front, like Kilala would feel like. And then this art up here was just too cute for its own good. It had to come home with me. I didn't have a choice. Well, I did have a choice, but I wasn't as responsible as I probably should have been and bought it anyway. But I still am going home with money, so we're okay. <laughs> All right, so merch-wise, I did get my first figure, but I'm going to talk about that in another situation. In your vlog. Just because I'm, I think I'm going to talk about it when I get it home and, like, set it up and stuff. Because there's other things going on with that. So we'll talk about it when we do that. HarperCollins strike is still going on. At the time of filming, it's 48 days, which is ridiculous. But Izzy gave me a very lovely gift. Sadly, it's an Avon title. So this is why we talk about the strike. All the info's down below. Go sign it. Do what you need to do. I don't need to explain it anymore because enough of us talk about it. So she gave me the gorgeous new cover, the not safe for work cover for Olivia Dade's Shipwrecked. I'm obsessed. Period. End of story. It's gorgeous. It's stunning. I don't know if I'll face it out on my shelf, but I want to. So we'll decide when I get home. <laughs> I gotta rework my entire library, so you guys will all see that too. Something else that I picked up, used, um, was a copy of Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder in its original cover. I know they have tons of covers for these now, um, but I really like the original cover best, I think. And so I'm just slowly picking them up as I find them. I'm not like going out of my way to find them. I did find this. I think it was at half price, not at McKay's. I think this one was a half price purchase. But yeah, really enjoyed picking up this one. Had a great time. 
because it's one I've read multiple times, so I want to own a physical copy. I don't care if it's a little dinged up. Books tell their own stories to me in that way. Speaking of, I did also decide to pick up the light novel for In the Land of Liadol. Um, I am reading the manga on this one, but um, the writing and the style of it is so good that I'm very, very excited to see where it's going to go from here. All right, so another one that I'm actually very excited to own is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This is a book I've been meaning to read for a very, very long time. Um, this is a very important book about people who are BIPOC and one being more white passing than the other and the decisions and choices that they make within their lives and how they differ wildly in what happens from little decisions. So I'm very excited to read this. You will probably see it in vlogs coming up very soon because I'm just that excited to read it. A couple other things before we move on to the crate that we haven't even touched yet. <laughs> um, I did find a copy of Darkest at Dawn by Christine Feehan. Um, there, I believe it's, um, this should be Raphael and Juliet, I believe. Yes, Raphael and Juliet. But this is part of the Carpathian series by Christine Feehan. There's a lot of them I don't own and a lot more you're going to see in this haul. But I'm slowly working on my Christine Feehan Carpathian collection because initially when I read most of the series, I checked it out from the library at the time. So I'm now slowly getting my own collection. The next one I have here is I Will Forget This Feeling Someday. Um, this is a light novel by Yoru Sumino, who does my favorite, which is At Night I Become a Monster. Um, the big, bold description on the back here is a bond and a love that stretches across time and parallel dimensions. Say no more. I love a good parallel dimension story. Um, and then the last one I have from the suitcase <laughs> is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, a novel by Heather Fawcett. I love fae stories. This cover is stunning. It's not a dust jacket. That's the actual cover. Like, it's so pretty. Um, a curmudgeon professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. I don't need to tell you anything else and that I'm probably going to love and adore this book. Period. End of story. It's been pitched as Howl's Moving Castle-esque. <gasps> it's been pitched as Howl-esque? Howl's Moving Castle-esque? Oh, good lord. That's why I was like, you have to read this, Yeah. Izzy and I are going to have to buddy read this, like, stat. Because she got a copy too. <laughs> Probably February. Okay, y'all. Let's get to this crate. Okay, first up. Dark Storm by Christine Feehan. Part of the Carpathian collection I'm talking about. Dark Blood. Same situation here. Dark Destiny. Dark Predator. Dark Knights. Dark Symphony. Dark Magic in its original cover. Dark Ghost. Dark Desire. Dark Curse, Dark Prince in its original cover, Dark Guardian, Dark Fire, Dark Promises, Dark Secret, another copy of Dark Dreamers, I think I have that twice, now that I'm sitting here going through them all. No, I guess not. No, not a duplicate. Woo! I was like, I don't think I had more than one, which is Dark Blood. <laughs> that one I accidentally have two of. So one's, I'm just going to donate back. It's fine. And then Dark Illusion. That is all of the dark Carpathia novels <laughs> that I picked up on this trip. So that's 18 of the 30 plus. <laughs> um, a lot of those aren't actually adding to my TBR, which is why I felt fine to purchase them. These are things that I've slowly been trying to find anyway. They just had a huge Christine Feehan collection. At this point, I just need to do inventory to see which ones I'm missing and which ones I need. And then I can find more or... I'm sure Izzy, next time she goes to McKay's, would happily help clean out the Feehan section a little for them. Because <laughs> they were, like, ecstatic that I was buying so much Feehan. <laughs> the last Feehan novel that I picked up was Savage Road. This is one that I do have digitally, and this one is darker. Our hero is a sadist in this one. So it's a very hard and tough book to read. But at the same time, I really love the heroine a lot. Seychelles is amazing. And... Savage isn't as savage as his name would lead you to believe when it comes down to it. Huh? Damn. <laughs> what do you mean? I want her to be savage. Like, well, be oh, he is. He's very much like murderer of the club. He is their hit, hired hit. He's their designated hitman. Okay. Okay. So he's dark. This is morality chain. He would burn the world for Seychelles. Do you need text, to borrow it? Text me the title later. 
I'm not gonna read it physically. Take a picture. I have a bunch by another author that I picked up, so I'm trying to gather all those. So the next author that I got the most books from on this trip was Kristen Ashley. As you guys know, Kristen Ashley is an author that I have started to consume quite a bit last year. And so I picked up some physicals of ones that I know I enjoy and a couple that um, I haven't started that series yet. So I picked up Breathe from the series I've read before. This is the Colorado Mountain series. And then I also picked up, wow, as I drop things, Kaleidoscope and Jagged from that same series. So very excited to have those. And then the other two that I picked up are from the Chaos series, the Chaos novels, which seems to be her Motorcycle Club series, which I have love-hate relationships with Motorcycle series. Some of them I really love and some of them I'm like, this is garbage. Why am I reading this? So hopefully this one isn't that. So I have Ride Steady and Fire Inside from the Chaos series. Um, so I'm really excited to give the Chaos series a try. I picked up the next two books that I needed in the... Um, Guild Hunter series by Nalini Singh, which is Archangel's Consort and Archangel's Blade. I think Blade is two and Consort is three. I forget which. But these are two and three, or three and four, because I have one and two. So, yes, very excited about those. Ah, I'm making messes. I did pick up a couple of different Harlequins. Um, I have Reunited with the Bull Rider, which looks absolutely brand new, so very excited to find that. I did find a Nocturne, which is an imprint that they don't make anymore, and the book is called Dragon's Curse by Denise Lynn. I kind of really like the cover of this. It's very, like, retro feeling and very excited about that. And I found another Nocturne that has two books in one. That's Goddess of Fate and Possessed by the Fallen. So I think those will be a lot of fun as well. I have four more books and then we're done. I swear. I know this video is long. Um, so first up, I picked up The Blackstone Promise um, by Rochelle Allers. Rochelle Allers is an author, a uh, BIPOC author that I've really enjoyed in the past. So I wanted to give another book of hers a try. I've only read her more recent ones. So I wanted to try something a little bit older and see how I felt about it, but still very excited. And then I picked up Lord of the Wolfen but, and Twin Targets by Jessica Anderson. Um, this is another Harlequin Nocturne. I didn't realize that because it was probably early in the Nocturnes. Um, but yeah, it's another two-in-one. Very exciting. I did find a pristine copy of Tempest by Beverly Jenkins, which I'm very excited to have found because one, I love this cover. Two, I didn't own this yet. And three, we stand Queen Bev in this house. Yes, in this house as well as my house <laughs> miles away. And then the last thing I have in this haul is the only item I picked up at Parnassus. We did stop by Parnassus in Nashville. It was an interesting experience. The store has a certain feel and a certain vibe. Um, you kind of don't really know what that is until you're there. It's hard to explain, but their clientele is very different than me and Izzy are. So we felt a certain way being there. But they did have a great book that I was super excited about, and that is Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This was out a little bit early, I think, or it just barely came out. So I was really excited to see a copy in her store, and I'm really excited to read this one because this is not an Alexis Hall I've read. So I love this cover and just very, very excited to read it. Other than one item that we're going to talk about in another video, that is my haul from Nashville. It's a lot. It's a lot, y'all. I went a little hog wild. But I won't be doing any book shopping or any manga shopping probably for we're months. Gonna we're going to hold each other accountable, try to get things read. Uh, there were some things that I didn't find while I was out here, and that's fine. They'll, they'll just have to wait. It's okay. I'm a big girl. I can be responsible, and I can wait and read the things I have. So with that said, thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you to Izzy for taking me all over Tennessee to get me all of this amazing stuff. So if you're here just because you love me, leave me a black cat emoji for peas and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I forgot one thing y'all. So I found this adorable water bottle at Books A Million. It's based around Robin Hood, the Disney Robin Hood. And this was my favorite Disney movie growing up as a kid. 
I was obsessed with Robin Hood. Like, babysitters would put this on. I would watch the entire thing. I would go up and say, it's finished. They could rewind it, and I would sit and watch it again. I was so obsessed. So this just felt like the perfect thing that I had to have. So yes, definitely loved this. It's been raining for days now, been running like a child. Can't feel the cold, but I'm lost here with you, lost in the woods. Lost as I choose. 